Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of October. Now this month is huge astrologically. We have got a lot going on. There's a lot for me to cover in the notes. What I'm going to do is in the mini reports we will be looking at the eclipse in depth for every single sign. So you definitely won't want to miss your mini report this time. Before I begin, I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this growing community. I'm sure you'll find this to be a lovely place to hang out on the internet. Now, at the 10,000 mark, I've got a little something special lined up for absolutely everyone that I think you're all going to love. So please do subscribe. Let's get the subscriber count up to the 10,000 mark so that we can all, you know, enjoy this special secret thing that I've got lined up for everyone. And the other thing I wanted to do before I begin was just talk you through what I've been working on behind the scenes. So I have been making this thing called the Vedic Astrology Deck. I don't know if you can see that there, I'll try and focus in on that. And this is a lovely card deck uh, which basically features 108 cards. I'll try and read some of this out. This 108 card deck features the North Indian style Vedic astrology chart and provides a brief analysis on each star position. So this is really a fantastic way to learn Vedic astrology if that's something that you're doing. Uh, you know, it's it's got every single star position mapped and you can shuffle and test yourself you can quiz yourself you can use this as part of your tarot spreads if you are a tarot reader so I know a lot of people have been waiting for this and it's now finally ready so you can go on the link below and you can buy your copy don't feel pressured or rushed to buy or any of that this is going to be available for a long time and I am going to create flip through videos so you will be able to see every single card before you purchase so stay tuned for those flip through videos. The other thing I wanted to let you know about is that I have reduced the price on my tutorial. So those of you who are beginners to Vedic astrology and you would just like to learn how to read your own chart and possibly, you know, the charts of your family or those people that you know, I teach you in that uh, tutorial. There's a PDF in there that's very in-depth. There's also a video that comes with that and it teaches you from zero how to start reading charts and you'll be able to read your own chart you'll be able to read your family's chart you'll be able to read you know charts of people that maybe you admire in the public eye or whoever it is even if you don't have their birth time as long as you have their day and location you can get pretty good at starting to analyze people and, and look at them and learn about them and, and things like that so i teach all of that in that tutorial and well while I'm here talking about various things that I sell through this platform I might as well put in a little bit of footage of my Teespring I think it's called Teespring I don't even know this is how infrequently I log on to my dashboard but I've got a Teespring merchandise shop and you can take a look there and see if anything catches your eye I have noticed there have been a few more sales so thank you to all of those who have ever purchased anything or booked a session anybody who clicks like anybody who puts a comment thank you with all my heart because you're keeping this whole thing going and you're keeping this whole thing free for absolutely everybody so I wanted to thank you so much all right why don't we get right into the news so as with any of my monthlies I tend to match up what's been going on in the news with what's been happening in the sky and yes this month we have had a big event which is the death of the reigning monarch of the United Kingdom. Now I actually spoke about this in my April Outlook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a link below and you'll be able to click on that and at the 22 minute mark you'll see that I have talked in some depth about that and I've said that it's likely to happen this year or next year. And in that outlook what I was seeing was the fact that in her Mahadasha Antardasha setup the Maraka energies are active and <clears throat> I've had a look uh, at her chart I won't bring it up but I did have a look and I saw the fact that Saturn is seventh from the moon and second from the ascendant so again you know two and seven we can see these Maraka energies present through the movement of Saturn in Capricorn 
We also have Saturn and Pluto moving through Capricorn. Pluto is going to be in Capricorn up until about 2040, which is very much indicating the fact that the entire establishment can be radically transformed at this time. So it's a very big time of change for the United Kingdom. I took a look at the chart of the UK, which I think might be interesting actually, because I know I've got a lot of clients there at the moment who are, well, who are feeling a little bit stuck there. <clears throat> it's really interesting. My throat is starting to go at this time. And I think a lot of people in the UK are just feeling perhaps a little bit um, claustrophobic, I want to say. Oh, this is terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to have to press on because I've actually tried to record this part of the video four times and my voice just keeps faltering. So I feel like there is some stuck energy around perhaps this topic or the United Kingdom. I am actually going to just touch on the chart of the UK. I might even bring that up. I am seeing that for the United Kingdom, things are going to get a lot better. Okay, so if you're in the UK and you're feeling stuck or that I want to get out of here, I'm, I'm working with several clients at, at the moment who are just, they're just like, I want to get out of here. I don't want to be in England anymore and, and they're tired and I, I understand. I know what it is to get fed up with the place where you are, are living, okay? And a lot of people haven't been traveling lately and yes i totally understand so when i look at the chart for the uk and when i look at the fact that saturn is going to move through aquarius uh, and i look at aquarius the sarvashtakavarga points score is really very good so i'm seeing that at the start of next year for 2.5 onwards i think things in england should be really really very good there could potentially be a drop of energy <clears throat> um, when Saturn moves into Pisces, and that's March 2025 onwards. Okay, so then things might shift a little bit, but what I'm seeing is that for the next few months, so much old energy is being cleared out of the United Kingdom. And it's so fascinating that my voice is completely blocking up at this point. <clears throat> I, I just have to press on because I can't keep stopping and starting the camera. So yeah, there is some major energy that needs to be cleared out of the United Kingdom. I completely understand. And if you're there and you're frustrated or you're fed up or, or whatever that is, just hang in there because it's going to get better. I know it. Uh, definitely the start of next year, 2.5 years. It should be that that Saturn transit in Aquarius should be really quite good. So do hang in there if you're there. All right, well, let's take a look at the energy for October. I'm so sorry about my voice. <coughs> let's see. I think it should start to get better now that I, I've left that slide. Let's leave everything there and let's head into this discussion of what the energy for October is going to be like. OK, well, it's packed. It's quite busy it's quite choppy and when I was looking at this yesterday when I was preparing the notes I was kind of seeing this type of thing I was seeing like energy is going to be up and down possibly there could be some sudden changes due to the square between Saturn and Uranus that is quite possible but we've got quite a lot of movement so I'll just run you through all the different items and I'll give you my summation at the end so the first thing I've got listed here is we've got a partial solar eclipse on the 25th of October. Uh, we have got the sun and moon. Okay, so it's a solar eclipse. We've got the sun and moon together there. Now they are with Ketu. Venus is very much involved here. So we've got the sun and moon at 7 degrees 49 minutes. And what I found incredible is that we've got Venus at 8 degrees and 29 minutes. So Venus is Kazemi, the sun, really. It's in the heart of the sun. <clears throat> so this eclipse is huge. And it will very much be about, yes, relationships, but I'm actually going to say it's about soul contracts. This is huge. This is a really big eclipse. 
and I think it has the ability to impact absolutely everyone across the board. We will talk about that in the mini readings. We've got two debilitations this month. So we're going to have Venus debilitated in Virgo until the 19th of October. Then we're going to have Sun debilitated in Libra from the 18th of October to 17th November. We've got Mars in Gemini from the 16th of October to the 13th of November. So basically Mars is going to be dipping his toe into Gemini. Mars doesn't particularly like to be there. So uh, and, and that varies according to you know the different signs but just generally Mars in Gemini he doesn't particularly like to be there he doesn't like to be lauded by Mercury I think that's kind of annoying for him so that's interesting energy right there we've got Saturn in hard Kendra aspect so Saturn in square to Uranus the whole month basically so that could be providing some of this up and down sort of sudden change type energy that's possible we do have Saturn moving forward from 23rd October onwards. So I like that. I like Saturn moving forward. He is the karmic accountant. He will have completed his review of everybody across the last few months. He's been covering old ground. We'll be able to start covering new ground and fresh ground with Saturn from 23rd October onwards. So a lot of us will be looking forward to that. But when I take a look at all of these events all at once, <clears throat> and I'm so glad that my voice is getting better. That was incredible. I honestly, I had to stop there. That was crazy. So yeah, the UK is going through massive clearing, I think. Um, but we've got a couple of flat tires this month is how I'm seeing these two debilitations. But the good news is that they're not both flat together, if you know what I mean. So we've got Venus debilitated until 19th October then Venus recovers and then we'll have Sun debilitated 18th October onwards because we've got one day of a flat tire there. You know, we've got the 18th of October where two energies are debilitated, but we do have two debilitations this month. Okay, so two important energies are not operating at their full strength. We have the potential for sudden changes on the world scene. Okay, that is the Saturn square Uranus both are retrograde. So it's really interesting if as they're retrograding they're finding that you know, the world hasn't learned its lesson. That could be difficult, that could be painful potentially. I'm not sure what, I don't know what to predict but I, I can tell you that you know, it depends on what they find, especially Saturn being the karmic accountant, it depends on what he finds. Saturn moves forward on the 23rd of October but then we've got a massive eclipse and that massive eclipse is going to shake up a lot of energy and that's all around soul contracts. So that's kind of why I'm saying it's up and down like this. It's like on the one hand you know okay the two debilitations aren't happening at the same time but then on the other hand you know we've got um, Uranus potentially causing sudden change but then we've got Saturn moving forward but then we've got an eclipse it's kind of like this as I was analyzing all the different things that we have here it's kind of like I, I kept finding okay well that's quite good but then this is not so good also the Mars in Gemini from 16th October to 13th November that's frustrated energy possibly Mind you, Mars can be a bit frustrated in Taurus and I did talk about that in the Mars retrograde video so you might like to catch up on that one as well. In fact, I'll be directing all of you to watch that one in your mini report. So big energy, big energy this month. And the eclipse, let's talk a bit about this eclipse across the board. What am I seeing here? Well, I'm definitely seeing that this is about relationships. We've got Venus. Well firstly where is this eclipse happening? It's happening in Libra and Libra is about relationships but I want to take this up a notch. I really think this is about contracts and I think it's about soul contracts especially. It can be about work contracts as well. Okay so anything where there is negotiation involved, where people are aiming for a win-win, 
definitely soul contracts, especially with your partner, with the one that you love. I'm working with a few of you at the moment. You are going through difficulties in your relationship. A couple of you even have mentioned to me that you're in the process of a divorce and things like that. So yes, this is that kind of eclipse where soul contracts are going to be renegotiated. And it, to me, it kind of feels like so we've got Libra, right, which is, as I said, um, you know, contracts, but it is relationships, it is marriage, it is partnerships, it's all that kind of thing. We've got Sun, Moon, Ketu, Venus here, Mercury's in here as well. Okay, so it is, and we've got the heart energies, Sun and the Moon, but we've got the head here, we've got logic as well. So it's really interesting. I feel like our hearts are being recalibrated as well at this time. There is a potential to clear out old heartbreak, old energies, because we've got Ketu here. Ketu is a separation energy. It's an eclipse, so something can be eclipsed out, and that can be old heartbreaks, old energies, old relationships that aren't serving us. These can be eclipsed out at this time. Because this is all happening on the Ketu side of things and not the Rahu side of things, I'm not going to be saying that this solar eclipse will jump anyone forward as such. Normally, if you watch me, when I talk about the eclipses, when I talk about a solar eclipse, I will typically talk about being jumped forward, that that is a possibility at this time. In this instance, we've got all the planets here with Ketu. I'm not seeing it that way. I'm kind of seeing that there will be jumping, but it's kind of shifting. And how I was seeing it was, it's like a chessboard, and it's like just all the pieces are going to be rearranged. And it's really interesting that we've had the big news with the royal family at this time, because all of their soul contracts, uh, and even what they do professionally and things like that, all of that is being rearranged at this time. So that is kind of interesting because they are, when we look at them energetically, they are very third dimensional, very heavy energy and slow energy. So we could count their reshuffle as part of this eclipse, right? Because you kind of need to step back quite a bit uh, with those people to, to see what's going on kind of thing in terms of, you know, what has happened there in the scheme of the stars and all that. It's like with them, you kind of need to, to step back quite a bit. Sometimes when I work with some of you guys, you're so, you know, you're quite 5D, you're high energy, you're, and, and some of you are so refined that, you know, the tiny little changes and shifts as I go through the transit wheel, you are actively responding to all of them. But it's really interesting. I kind of do class what's happened with the royal family as part of this eclipse. I think this fits in really well here. And with them, you can, you, you kind of need to step back and you could count this big reshuffle as being part of, of this eclipse. And of course, I mean, what's happened with them as well, I do count uh, the big changes that are going on there, really just as part of Saturn and Pluto stepping into Capricorn, which happened in 2020. That's really when, you know, the establishment is being shaken up, it's being transformed. I think it will be broken down at some point. I think, you know, um, a lot of old energies need to clear out. My goodness, I just could not stop coughing when I was dealing with that slide where I've got the notes here. So that is interesting. I almost did not make it past that slide. And I was thinking, do I, am I not supposed to talk about this? But no, I can. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think this is a time where it's soul contracts are going to be renegotiated across the board. And as I was saying, it's kind of like a chessboard and the, the pieces are all just going to be shuffled. So I don't particularly see anyone being jumped forward. I don't see this as some kind of linear type thing. It could even be circular where just people are going to be shifted and moved. And this can be to do with your work. This can be to do with where you are in the world. This can be, I think it's particularly to do with soul contracts, especially to do with love life. And this can be as well 
the calibration of your heart. We've got the sun and the moon in here as well. Mother, father are in here. And I feel like, you know, the way they raised you, the way they calibrated your heart for love, all of that can be shifted and changed. So I really think there's something in this for everyone, whether you're in a relationship or if you're single, brilliant. This is a great time to be single actually because your heart can be cleared and renewed so that you know the next love that is brought in for you is brought in at a higher level. So I'm actually kind of excited about this eclipse because I think, well, all of those of us who watch these type of reports, you know, we're aware and I've got the note here that all you need to do is stay high vibe, keep affirming everything is working out for my highest good and just let the shuffling happen around you and just expect for the best, expect for the best to come in for you from here on. Okay, so I feel good about this, but equally there can be some tough stuff that happens uh, in, in relation to, to this eclipse as well. But I will talk about that for every single sign. So why don't we get into all the different mini reports. This time I am going to be covering the full moon. We're going to cover the movement of Mars. Mars is going to dip into Gemini. We'll talk about that. And we'll also take a look at the solar eclipse. So are you ready? Let's get into it. All right, Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. Okay Aries, what's happening for you? Now the full moon is going to happen on the 9th or the 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This is happening in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. So we're closing a big cycle here. We're closing a cycle in Pisces. We're closing a cycle here in the last nakshatra of the 27 lunar mansions. This is happening for you in the 12th house, my goodness. So you're going to be closing out some kind of incredibly big cycle. And I think it's to do with your spiritual development. Now there is a Gaj Kesari yoga that's forming at this time. The moon will be in the house of Jupiter. Jupiter is in his own house. Jupiter is right here. Fantastic. So not only are you going to close a really big cycle at this time, you're going to gain insights from the other side and you might be incredibly wise at this time. So if you are a light worker, a guide, a counselor, any of these things, as so many people in my audience are, then you can expect to be very wise at this time. So that's really great. Um, good time to jot down uh, any insights that you have as well. Now Mars, we're going to take a look at the movement of Mars. Mars will dip into Gemini from the 16th of October for the rest of the month. This is happening in your third house. Okay, now he's going to be there really from 16th October. I think it was to about, if I've got this right, it's 13th November. I just remember that, 13th November. And then of course we're going to have Mars retrograding. He's going to be back in Taurus. Okay, so for that, you will want to look at the Mars retrograde video. I'm going to link it below. I'll also link it above as well. So you will be able to easily access that. Do watch that in addition to this report, the Mars retrograde video, because that will cover Mars retrograding back into Taurus. But for a while in the month of October, especially, we've got Mars here in Gemini. This is in your third house. This is fantastic energy. This is great for business. Now I know, you know, typically, you know, Mars doesn't like being in Gemini, all that kind of thing. But for you, it's in your third house. Housewise, it's excellent. Really, really good. So great energy for business, great energy for media, social media, accelerating your social media, growing your social media platform, presenting ideas at work. Um, it's great for going for new jobs, all that kind of thing. So this is really, really good energy. Make the most of that little window there. And then we've got the big eclipse that is happening on the 25th of October in Swati Nakshatra in your seventh house. Okay, so now for you Aries, this is all about your relationships and especially your relationship with the person you're married to. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're single, this eclipse has the potential to recalibrate your heart, to renew your heart, to eclipse out old energies. This is a great thing, okay? You could 
awaken from this eclipse feeling very refreshed. You might not experience the results of this immediately, but you know, in the coming weeks and months, you could feel some impact uh, of this eclipse on your heart and on your love life. So Aries, it's looking like a pretty good month ahead for you. I'm wishing you well, take care. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Let's take a look at the full moon for you, Taurus. Now this is happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. It will happen in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. So it's kind of, you know, this is the last zodiac sign and it's the last nakshatra. We are closing out a big cycle here. So for you, this is happening in your 11th house. Also, there's a guide Kesri Yoga here which is going to make you very wise. So you could be closing out a big cycle relating to your elder siblings or friends, people that you admire, people that you consider alike, you know, a soul brother or sister to you. You might get some really deep insights about your, your, your siblings or your friends or your relationship with them. That can happen at this time could also make you a really good guide to these people as well if there's someone around you that's in need of guidance you might be the one to provide that now mars dips into gemini from the 16th of october for the rest of the month i think it's up until you know about the first few days of november there this is happening for you in your second house. So definitely take care in your relationships with your family, uh, how you speak with your family. You know, there could be more argumentative energy at home at this time. So just see if you can find, find ways to take time out, take the dog for a walk, all that kind of thing. Uh, there could also be a tendency to overspend when Mars is in the second house. He sometimes likes to spend money when he's there. So where was I Taurus? Apologies, the camera got cut. My battery ran out. Um, I think I talked about overspending that Mars likes to overspend when he's here. Just take care, your expenses might go up at this time. The other thing about Mars is that yes, he'll be dipping into Gemini, but then he will retrograde back into Taurus. Now that is important and you'll want to look up the Mars retrograde video for that. I'll put a link above or a link below. You will be able to find the link to that video and watch that. So definitely watch that as well as part of your outlook for October. Now the eclipse. Okay, this is big. This is happening on the 25th of October. This is in Swathi Nakshatra in your sixth house. So for you, soul contracts will be renegotiated, but they're going to be renegotiated relating to your work, to your service in the world. This could also be something connecting you in with clients. If you're self-employed, you have clients or you do the kind of work where you have lots of clients, there could be soul contracts renegotiated there. Also, if you are involved in any legal case or something like that, energy could really be shifted around you at this time. So there's a lot of energetic soul contracts that are up for renegotiation and what I would say is that keep affirming that everything is working out for my highest good. So you be that little oasis of calm and you just allow it all to happen around you and know that you're going to be fine. Okay Taurus, you've got very good energy here uh, all around and and see how that time goes for you. But I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing you all the best, Taurus. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have got a full moon happening on the 9th or the 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This will be in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. 
and it's happening for you in your 10th house. Now there's a guard Kesari in the sky as well. Moon's going to be in the same house as Jupiter. So you're going to be extra wise on this full moon. Uh, now whereabouts are you going to be wise? Well, you're going to be really wise at your workplace. I've got the note here, share your insights and ideas at this time. The other thing that you might find is that there might be some people at your work place who come to you for guidance or for advice or something like that you are going to be particularly wise in your workplace so definitely speak up share what you have to say share your insights you might get some particularly good insights at this time so definitely try and have your ideas uh, seen and heard at this time now mars is going to dip into gemini from the 16th of October for the rest of the month. That's even into the first few days of November. And this is happening for you in your first house. Now this is an interesting one. You might feel energetic, but equally you might feel drained. It's an interesting one. Sometimes Mars in the first house, it can be energizing, but equally sometimes it, it could be draining, it could be tiring. So just take care of your health. And if you need to chill out or have time out, uh, then that would be a good thing if you can kind of yeah make room for more rest or downtime in your life i've got the note here be careful of how you speak to your mother or your partner so the person you're in a relationship with uh, at this time as well now you'll also want to look out for the mars retrograde video we are going to have mars retrograde from the 31st of october to january 2023 so definitely have a look at that i'm going to link that above or below the link will be somewhere so do take a look at the mars retrograde video and watch that as part of this report as well now there is an eclipse happening this is big news for everybody so the eclipse is happening on the 25th of october in swati nakshatra for you it's happening in your fifth house so soul contracts are being renegotiated at this time for you it could be relating to your children okay so soul contracts relating to your children and this can manifest in all kinds of different ways uh, depending on what's happening in your in your specific life situation but the area is definitely your children um, it could also manifest as staff if you're a boss as well if you manage a team there could be some shifting of people in your teams the other thing is that you could really benefit from a good old clear out of, of heart energy okay so the energy in your heart that you use you know for romance for being in love and all that kind of thing that part of your heart could get a real clear out okay and wouldn't that be nice wouldn't it be nice to just have you know the cords cut and and you know you not reflecting on the old memories or, or any of that if that is what's going on you know if you're energetically still tied to someone that you're not with or, or something like that if you want to be free and to be clear of all that well this is a very good time for that to possibly happen so Gemini I'm really liking the look of this month for you. I'll just say take extra rest if you need it. You know, you've got Mars in that first house of yours, 16th October onwards. Towards the end of the month, you might just feel really tired. So take some time out, listen to your body. It's really important. All right, Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have going on? Well, we've got a full moon and that's gonna be happening 9th or 10th October, depending on where you are in the world. And that will be in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra in your ninth house. Now there's also a Gaj Kesari Yoga that's happening on this full moon okay so we've got the moon there with jupiter in the same house so you can be very wise at this time you can be more wise than usual i've got the note here that great wisdom can be gained from teachers teachers that you love equally you will be equipped to teach people and share your wisdom and share your insights you will be able to speak as well with extra authority so this is actually really good this is even good with your friendships as well because this is opposite the third house there but this could also be good at work okay we are in the ninth house here and this could be a time where you present ideas to 
people in authority or people above you or that kind of thing. This is a good time for that. Now Mars dips into Gemini from the 16th of October for the rest of the month. Basically Mars will be in Gemini 16th October into the first few days of November even. And for you that's happening in your 12th house. Now this might provide some restless energy. You might feel physically restless. Uh, it's a good idea if you can to channel this energy into exercise. So even just light yoga, um, yoga with Adrian, I always recommend her or things like martial arts. I've also been doing this thing called Qigong. Actually, I'll put the name of the video that I absolutely love at the moment. It's a Qigong in love video. It's really sweet. So I'll give you the name of that. This, that's a good one to do actually with, um, with this eclipse going on. So yeah, definitely check out that Qigong video. Uh, this is a good time for you to, to indulge in that kind of thing. So that's from the 16th of October to about the you know, first few days of November. And then after that, we're gonna have Mars retrograding back into Taurus and you'll definitely want to check that out and I've got a link either above or below there'll be a link somewhere to the Mars retrograde video definitely watch that and you can re-watch that because I imagine some people already did watch that but then if you're like me you'll probably forget what was said so it's good to watch it closer to October so definitely check that out now the eclipse this is the thing I've been talking about for this whole episode this is the big news so the eclipse is happening on the 25th of october in swati nakshatra in your fourth house okay cancer for you this is huge because this could be you know relating to your family and or your work and this is basically soul contracts are being renegotiated at this time so this could be a time of really big change for you because it's it's happening, you know, yes, it's happening in the fourth house of home, but that is impacting the 10th house of career as well. So for you, it's kind of your, the potential for change is, is really quite huge. If you go through this period and you discover nothing much happened, that can be due to, I know what that's like, because at one time I had, basically a massive eclipse happened on a very significant uh, place in my chart and I didn't feel a thing and I kept thinking oh the astrologers all keep saying that this is going to be revolutionary and big for me and that nothing happened but now when I look back several years later I can see that was the year when my whole life changed so if you go through this time and you say well nothing much happened this could be a time where you look back uh, you know down the track and you you discover oh wow a lot actually did change so don't worry if you don't notice anything um, yeah because I think a lot of things energetically are going to be shifted all around us just keep affirming that everything's working out for my highest good you be that stable central calm place in the middle of all the shifts it's going to be fine all right, Cancer, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, or Leo Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. Now, we've got a full moon happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This is happening in Pisces, Ravathi, Nakshatra. So we're closing out a big cycle because this is happening in the last sign of the zodiac. It's happening in the last nakshatra. And for you, it's happening in your eighth house. And there's a Gaj Kesari yoga happening. So we've got the moon and Jupiter is just nearby. So this is incredible energy for you. Now, at this time, Leo, you could make an excellent agony aunt. So I don't know if you have any experience with people telling you all their problems and you having to give wise words of advice. Well, that could be you. I've got the note here. You can offer wise counsel to others, especially family, um, or extended family at this time. Okay, so don't be surprised if people are particularly coming to you, they want advice, they want guidance, all that kind of thing. Now we've got Mars dipping his toe into Gemini. This is 16th of October for the rest of the month. So that's really 16th October till about the first few days of November. Mars is going to be there in Gemini and this is happening for you. Oh, fantastic. In your 11th house. This is great energy. So make the most of this time, Leo. Okay. So you've got this burst where Mars is going to be in your 11th house. So there could be, you know, money come in, opportunities, networking, you could win clients. Um, 
definitely yeah more money prosperity all kinds of things great opportunity type energy if you run a social media platform this could burst give give you a burst to your ratings or something like that things could be really amazing so try and make the most of that energy from 16th october onwards um, now we are going to have mars retrograde on the 31st of october if you missed my mars retrograde video I'll link it above or below you'll be able to catch up on that and definitely watch that closer to 31st October because if you're like me you know I watch these things and then I forget so you can watch it closer to the date but I'll create a little reminder video for everyone to go back and re-watch that one so you, but you can check that out even now okay now the eclipse that's happening on the 25th of October in Swathi Nakshatra in your third house so what we've got going on with this eclipse is that soul contracts are being renegotiated at this time now for you this could be soul contracts relating to peers at work friends friends around you people at your level um, this could be siblings as well especially younger siblings so if you've been having any tension or difficulty with people uh, in in these areas like as in friends peers siblings any of that there could be some shifting of energy at this time so be mindful of that and keep your mind focused on the fact that you would like anything that's blocking your confidence to be eclipsed out okay that that's what could happen at this time so any problems that you're having at work with friends with siblings those could be eclipsed out the energy could be eclipsed out at this time and anything that's blocking your confidence okay or anything that's even blocking your mental comprehension if you've been feeling sluggish or slow or tired or like mentally um, you could find that there's a shake-up in that area too and that something could be eclipsed out this could be really positive for you Leo keep affirming that everything's happening for my highest good keep your focus on the high vibes and what it is that you want to create and you should be able to create that at this time so leo thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now this is virgo ascendant virgo moon virgo sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology now we've got a full moon on the 9th or 10th of october depending on where you are in the world this is happening in pisces revati nakshatra we're closing out a big cycle here because we've got the last sign last zodiac sign pisces we've got the last nakshatra revati now this is happening for you in your seventh house we've also got a gaj kesari happening at this time gaj kesari yoga is a combination of well it's jupiter and moon uh, in kendra okay and they're together so that that qualifies so you're going to be very wise and you're going to be able to be the wise counselor to your marriage partner isn't that amazing so the person you're married to um, or in a very long-term commitment with you know with that person you might be the wise counsel that they turn to and you're able to offer some insights or help your partner at this time the other thing is you could even share your wisdom with say for example you have a business partner or if you have a big social media platform or any of that you'll be able to share your wisdom with all those people too so that's pretty amazing Virgo now Mars is going to dip his toe into Gemini this is from 16th October for the rest of the month we're looking at 16th October to about the first few days of November and this is happening for you in your 10th house so this is energy to excel at work okay Mars loves to be in the 10th house he wants to perform he wants to do things he wants to create he's excited he's on the battlefield right so do your work and be enthusiastic but be humble okay don't go above the heads of your seniors and all that kind of thing you've got the energy to get projects off the ground okay this is a nice burst of energy here for you 16th October to about the first few days of November and then after that we're going to have Mars retrograding back into Taurus so you will want to catch up with my Mars retrograde video I'll put a link above or below somewhere here you'll be able to click on that link and find out how that Mars retrograde is going to work out for you now the eclipse this is the big news this is happening on the 25th of October in Swati Nakshatra and for you it's happening in your second house okay so this is quite big in relation to your family especially in relation to your family of origin 
soul contracts with your family of origin could be renegotiated at this time or there could be some energetic shifts happening at this time with people that are really close to you really important to you and I've got the note here affirm that all is happening for my highest good but recognize that when you use the word my highest good that my that word is that's me that's that's my mum that's my dad that's my brother that's all my people you know so all the changes are going to happen yes for your highest good but for everybody who's deeply energetically connected to you in terms of family okay this your family and you you're all going to uh, hopefully clear out a lot of old stuck energies hopefully those are going to go and I really do believe they will because it's very interesting at the start of this video I was coughing like crazy I had to stop start about four times and drink water and all this kind of thing it was crazy and now I'm just I'm clear so I really do think that there is old stuck energy uh, in the world and but this this eclipse is gonna it's gonna sort out a lot of things so just keep yourself high vibe that you're gonna be one of the people who prospers and um, it's kind of it's not linear it's not like you're going up but you're 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 going to be the stable calm one energy shifts will happen around you and you'll all be good to go from there on I've got good feelings about this Virgo so I'm going to leave it at that but thank you so much for joining in and we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time we're okay so Libra this is Libra ascendant libra moon or libra sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology what do we have this month well we've got full moon 9th or 10th october and this is going to be in pisces Revati nakshatra now there's a gaj kesari in the sky so this is a beautiful yoga that will make you incredibly wise and this is happening in your sixth house so you're going to have heightened wisdom regarding your work and regarding your service to the world if you're a service professional if you work with clients so you know this is doctors nurses astrologers light workers right lawyers think of all the professions that have clients okay so and, and you serve them right so you're gonna have extra wisdom at this time you're gonna be really wise I think you're gonna be able to serve these people so beautifully at this time okay I've got great feelings about this full moon there's a lot of sattvic energy as well uh, connected in with this so it's a, it's a lovely full moon so do enjoy the energy of that now we've got Mars dipping his toe into Gemini this is from 16th October for the rest of the month even the first few days of November and for you this is going to happen in your ninth house so you might actually experience some possible clashes with authority figures um, this could be your boss this could be your father okay so just take care uh, you know as, as you move through the world and know that you know there is some tense energy about kind of 16th October onwards for you this month you will also want to check out my Mars retrograde video I'll put a link above or below there'll be a link somewhere and you'll be able to see that on the 31st of October Mars is going to retrograde back into Taurus and you'll be able to see what area that is impacting you okay now the big news the eclipse this is happening on the 25th of October in Swathi Nakshatra in your first house this is huge Libra this is all about you this eclipse is all about you this this is huge this is really really big so soul contracts connecting in with all areas of your life could shift at this time okay there's a lot that's up for renewal and it's a really really big time now I think I mentioned this a couple of signs ago but what if you're in this time and you discover nothing much happened like a couple of weeks after the eclipse you're like oh nothing really happened for me I had this experience I had a massive eclipse uh, you know on my Rahu Ketu axis it was impacting a lot of things it was it was huge it was a really 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 big eclipse and all the astrologers were saying this is going to change your life this is huge this is all that stuff I'm sitting there going nothing happened but when I look back several years later I can see that that was the exact year and time when my whole life changed okay but it just 
physically nothing happened or you know um, and it can be like that you know but energetically everything did shift I just didn't realize because I was just looking at my 3d world and seeing well nothing has changed so I just want to say that if you're in this and you discover well nothing much changed this could be the kind of thing that you see much later and you look back and you see ah this is was a very significant time okay um, and this is very significant for you, especially if you have your nodes connected in with this, your Rahu Ketu axis is connected in with this, or your sun and moon on this line, or you know any significant planets on this line. This could be very, very impactful for you, especially anything in Libra. Okay, this could be a really, really big time. But having said that, you may not experience anything in 3D, seemingly, but energetically everything can shift. So just bear that in mind. What I'm saying to all the different signs is keep affirming that everything's happening for my highest good. And just keep staying high vibe, keep staying positive, keep knowing that everything might shift around you, but I'm okay. I'm in the center, I'm calm, no problems here. Just keep affirming that. And you'll see everything will shift to lift you. Okay, that's what you've got to keep in mind. Libra, I'm excited for you because when I look back at the time when everything shifted for me, and but I didn't know it, that was actually a really good time. So, you know, yeah, hang in there, Libra. It's, things are gonna improve for the better. All right, well, thank you so much for joining and we are now gonna welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we have got a full moon happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. And this is going to be in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. There's a Gaj Kesari Yoga happening in the sky. So we've got the beautiful full moon is right there with Jupiter. It's really stunning. And this is all happening in your fifth house. So you might have some extra wisdom or some particular insights regarding your children. Okay, you might be particularly insightful, and I know most mums, uh, this is especially a mum thing, isn't it? Where mums have got that extra intuition for their little children, they know what's going on. Well, that might be heightened even more. Okay, and dads out there, this could be the case for you as well. So you might be especially intuitive regarding your children at this time, more so than usual. Uh, there could also be, you might get some downloads or insights for your creativity. If you're a creative person, as just about everyone who comes to this channel is, you know, you might get some insights, some ideas, you might want to write some things down or plan some things out. So this is quite good. This could also be a time where you get insights or ideas about your investments and how to rearrange those. That could also be a thing at this time. Now Mars is going to dip his toe into Gemini from 16th October for the rest of the month. And this might even happen, you know, within the, well, this will happen within the first few days of November as well, okay? So, you know, Mars is gonna be in Gemini for quite a little while there. There's quite a burst of him being in Gemini. Now for you, this is gonna be in your eighth house. So something, and I don't know what this is, but you can let me know in the comments below if this happens. Something might come to a close at this time or something might just naturally a cycle might complete or something might close. You might naturally switch jobs or your contract dries up or something along these lines. And never worry if that happens because there's always a demand for work. There's always new work out there. You will definitely find something. So this could be a time where something comes to a close and you're actually given a chance to rest and you need that rest. So if that's the case, brilliant, and enjoy the little bit of rest that, that you can get uh, if this is a thing for you. So something might come to a close at this time, okay? Um, the other thing I wanna say is look at the Mars retrograde video. Mars will retrograde back into Taurus. This is, so now he's retrograding from 31st October to Jan 2023, but he'll be back in Taurus from 13th November onwards, okay? So if you want to see what that's gonna be for you, uh, click on the link either above or below, there'll be a link somewhere, you'll be able to have a look at that. And I'll be reminding everyone, I'm actually gonna put out, because I made that video so early this time, I'm gonna put out a little reminder video to point everyone to go back and, and re-watch that. 
Now there's an eclipse. This is the big news for this month. There's an eclipse happening on the 25th of October, Swati Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your 12th house. So for everybody across the board, I'm seeing that this is about soul contracts being renegotiated. And for you in the 12th house, what's going to be re renegotiated is actually stuff that we can't see. Okay, so this is quite incredible actually because Things that are on the other side of the veil could be rearranged and renegotiated for you at this time. So what kind of things could those be? Now, this could be, you know, if you're, let's say you're in your 30s and you're getting married and, and you know, perhaps, and, and this is a thing that does happen. I've worked with many energy healers, professionals, psychics, channelers. Uh, I, oh, I've had so much experience with all these things. I don't do it myself, but I've worked with these people. And you know, they will be able to tell you that, yeah, there are a couple of children being arranged for you. You know, it's things like that that could be being a, rearranged on that other side at this time. Okay, so, and maybe, maybe if you're single, maybe, you know, and this is that kind of soul matey, twin flamey type conversation that we're having here. It is, it's kind of, it's all that kind of stuff. What's happening behind the scenes. Some of all of that is being rearranged for you at this time. Okay, and so what I'm telling everyone is to keep affirming that everything's working out for my highest good. And you be that central pillar, you're just stationary and calm. Everything's gonna shift around you and it's gonna lift you up. Okay, all these changes, believe that they're gonna be positive for you and they will be. So Scorpio, I'm liking the look of this month for you. Uh, do take some rest if you need it. If you need downtime with that Mars position there, 16th October onwards, even carve out some downtime, some chill out time, some sit on the couch and you know what, watch Netflix or whatever. I don't have Netflix, I watch YouTube, I don't know. But all that stuff, that's, that's a good thing to do. All right, Scorpio, well, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Welcome to your mini report. I must apologize, I'm in a completely different outfit. What has happened is that I've been editing the video today and I can't believe it. Somehow I just did not write your mini report slide at all and I didn't look up your thing. I don't know how that's happened. How terrible. And today I've like, I haven't even combed my hair. I haven't put on any makeup and I'm really tired and I've just been working hard and I'm so sorry. So you're just going to have to deal with a different color jumper and me looking very tired. But here it is. Here is your mini report bit. So now this is going to be Sagittarius. See, I've got to get in the flow now. I'm out of the flow. All right. Sagittarius ascendant, Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Welcome, we are gonna talk about the full moon. Now the full moon for you is happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This is gonna be happening in Pisces, Ravathi Nakshatra in your fourth house. Now we've got a Gaj Kesari happening in the sky, okay? We've got Jupiter in his own house, the moon is there, there's a lot of wisdom as part of this full moon. So you're going to be particularly wise and you're going to have wisdom or insights regarding your relationship with your mother, possibly how you were raised, possibly insights about your family of origin. This could be an amazing time. Equally, you could have those kind of insights for others around you, okay? So you could be the wise counsel to somebody else. So that's pretty amazing. Now, Mars energy, is quite exciting this month as well. We've got Mars dipping into Gemini from the 16th of October for the rest of the month. And he's gonna be there as well for the first few days of November. So this is happening in your seventh house. Now, this is one where you will want to go easy on your relationship with your partner. If you're married, if you're in a long-term commitment, you'll definitely want to you know, just have a bit of space, not get into any arguments, or just be conscious of the fact that the energy could be a little bit more tense at this time. Okay, the potential for arguments is a bit higher, so this might be a time where you wanna be a bit more conscious of that type of energy. Now, look out for Mars retrograde. Uh, I am pointing all the signs, as I have been pointing the signs to, I've just got the thing up on my screen, this, uh, I'm editing, I'll show you my editing screen right now. So yeah, We've got 
Mars retrograde video. You can watch that. Um, I'm going to link that above or below. It'll be linked somewhere. You'll be able to look at how Mars retrograde is going to be. I'm basically looking at Mars in Taurus in that video. So you will be able to uh, take a look at that from 31st October onwards. That's when Mars retrograde will begin. And he's going to be in Taurus really, you know, I think after the 13th of November thereabouts. Now the eclipse. This is the big news. This is what you want to know about. And it, isn't that interesting? You've been eclipsed out of this video. What does that mean? Let's have a look. This is happening in your 11th house. Hmm. I can't, I can't join any dots or work out any symbolism there, but let's take a look. So now the eclipse is happening for you in Swati Nakshatra, Libra Swati Nakshatra, 25th of October, and it's happening in your 11th house. So soul contracts with your elder siblings could be rearranged at this time or people that you consider to be your soul tribe people and I do see soul tribe people as being 11th house people because these are the people that you spend time with and you say you're my soul sister or you're my soul brother you know these are those kind of people so energy could be shuffled or rearranged or people could be shuffled or rearranged at this time there could also be space that is being cleared for more of your soul tribe people to come in. Okay, so if you are ready to welcome new people into your life, this could be beautiful energy that could really be clearing up some space, getting your heart ready to welcome new people into your life. So Sagittarius, I do hope this has been a good mini reading for you. And we are now gonna welcome Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Capricorn, Ascendant Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Capricorn, we've got a full moon happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This is happening in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. And for you, it's happening in your third house. Now, the special thing about this full moon is that we've got a Gaj Kesari Yoga. We've got Jupiter in the house as well. So this is very exciting energy. I love this. So you're going to be particularly wise. And if you find that your siblings come to you for insights or your friends, you know, um, you will have insights. You, you'll be a great counselor for people around you at this time, especially your friends, especially your siblings. The other thing is that if you run a social media platform of some kind, uh, brilliant, you'll be able to share extra insightful and wise wisdom type stuff at this time. So brilliant. Keep noting down your insights and be sure to share um, what it is you're capturing uh, at this time. Now Mars is going to dip his toe into Gemini. This is from 16th October for the rest of the month into the first few days of November. And this is happening for you in your sixth house. Okay, brilliant. This is great energy. And you'll want to make the most of this. So this is just a burst, okay? Because Mars is actually going to retrograde back into Taurus. So you want to make the most of this burst. So this is, <coughs> this is from the 16th of October to, I think it's the 13th of November. If I need to correct it on the screen, I will. But I'm pretty sure I've got that right. You'll really want to make the most of this beautiful energy. This is great energy to win new business. If you work on a project by project basis or you work with clients, this is you know great for your service in the world, for your career, all that kind of thing. You can succeed at work. You can beat the competition. If there are any legal cases that are happening at this time, you've got some energy on your side. Okay. From 16th October to about, you know, about 13th November. Now, if you want, you can take a look at the Mars retrograde video. I do recommend all signs do that at this time if you haven't already. Uh, I'll put a link above or below, but basically this video is going to cover the movement of Mars from 31st October to January. Basically, Mars is going to retrograde back into Taurus and I cover that information there. And that's really, he, he's retrograding from 31st October in Gemini but then he'll be in Taurus, I believe it's 13th November onwards, retrograding. So he'll be covering some old ground and you'll be able to get some insights as to where that is. Now the eclipse, that's the really big news this time around. So that's the 25th of October, that's in Swati Nakshatra and that's happening in your 10th house. So 
what I'm saying across the board is that soul contracts are being renegotiated at this time. Now for you, this is happening in your 10th house. So this is, yes, it's to do with co-workers or people that you work with but I'm actually seeing it as more than that for you Capricorn this is your soul contract to do with your career that whole thing could be being corrected shifted dealt with there's some kind of there's some kind of energetic shifting that's going on for you at work Okay, this could be reflected back to you by people around you, by others around you. Equally, this could be to do with your relationships with your co-workers. This could also be to do with what it is you're here to do. And is the stepping stone that you are on, is that correct? Because perhaps there's some work going on behind the scenes to organize the next best stepping stone for you so that you can, you can keep progressing so I actually think this could be quite a very large uh, transition for you at this time, Capricorn. Don't worry if you're going through it and you feel like nothing's happening. This can be the kind of thing that, you know, later on you look back and you see, oh, a lot changed in my work situation at that time. But Capricorn, I'm liking the energy for you on the whole. I'm especially loving your Mars in Gemini burst that's going to be absolutely amazing make the most of that energy it's very very good you're one of the lucky three who's getting great energy with mars in gemini there all right well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome aquarius aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining now this is aquarius ascendant aquarius moon or aquarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology all right, so we have got a full moon happening on the 9th or 10th of October, depending on where you are in the world. This is happening in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra in your second house. Now there is a God Kesari Yoga happening here at this time as well. So you're going to be very wise and you're going to be wise regarding, well, you're going to have some insights regarding your family members and, you know, family members might come to you. You might be able to offer wise counsel to them at this time. So that's pretty exciting. This full moon has got you all lit up and you're very wise. So share your wisdom with people who you're close to and that you care about. Now Mars is going to dip his toe into Gemini. This is 16th October for the rest of the month. This is into the first few days of November as well. And this is happening for you in your fifth house. So definitely be careful how you speak with your children. If you've got kids, you might feel a bit stressed. We might be, you know, a little bit aggressive or abrupt at times. So be careful around your kids. Um, the other thing is if you're a, you're a boss and you manage staff or any of that, just be careful about how you um, talk to them. And just be mindful that if you're starting to get a bit stressed, take a bit of time out. But this, the one thing about this energy, which I really like, is that this is actually really good creative energy. So if you've got creative projects or side projects, something you're passionate about, something you want to put your heart into, your heart and soul, you know, that's where we are here in the fifth house, right? So you've got some energy to do that. So if you've got creative projects or creative work, you've got to get on with it. 16th October to those first few days of November. Now, you'll also want to look at the Mars retrograde video. I'll put a link above or below. Somewhere there'll be a link and you'll be able to have a look at Mars retrograde, which is happening 31st October to January 2023. And basically, he's going to be retrograding, yes, a little bit in Gemini, but then you know, 13 November, I think onwards, he's going to be in Taurus. You'll want to have a look at that because that's going to be quite important. Now, there's an eclipse happening on the 25th of October. This is the big news and this is happening in Swathi Nakshatra in your ninth house. So a lot of soul contracts are being renegotiated at this time and you could find that your soul contracts with your gurus and your teachers and people that you look up to and admire, this could be being renegotiated or shifted or changed. You might discover some changes happening here at this time. <clears throat> the other thing is, that this could also be a time where things are being shifted and moved so that you are able to teach others. Okay, so that could be uh, an important thing that happens at this time. You might be being given some more authority or a bigger platform or more ability to speak to more people or that kind of thing could be happening at this time. So Aquarius, 
I'm liking the look of the energy, especially your beautiful um, Gaj Kesri Yoga. You've got some really nice energy there to share with your family members. So I'm, I'm loving the look of that. But I want to thank you for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we have got a full moon happening on either the 9th or 10th of October. This is in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. There's a Gaj Kesari Yoga in the sky. So the big, bright, beautiful full moon is going to be there with Jupiter in the house as well. And Jupiter Lord of the house too. So this is quite exciting. This is happening for you in your first house. So you just as a being, as a whole being, you're going to be very wise at this time. You're just going to be lit up with insights and wisdom and so many things might be occurring to you. Uh, this could be a good time to journal, to write down your insights. You might you know, get a lot of ideas at this time. Equally, you might be a wonderful guide to anybody around you who wants guidance, okay, and who wants help. And especially if you know, especially if you've been going through something tough or any of that, they always say that one remedy for that is to help somebody near you, anybody, you know, help somebody else. And that tends to lift the burdens that we experience. Isn't that amazing? So, but you're just going to be wise and lit, lit up at this time. So I'm excited for that for you. Now, Mars dips his toe into Gemini <clears throat> from 16th October for the rest of the month and really he's going to be in Gemini even into the first few days of November. Now for you this is happening in your fourth house so if you're moving at this time take extra care build in buffer time if you can delay your move if you can delay your move so that it happens say for example I think after 13th of November that would be ideal okay but if you can't do move, but do so mindfully, carefully, build in extra time, recognize that people might get stressed and argumentative and all that kind of thing. I've also got the note here, be careful how you speak with your mother or be careful of the relationship you have with your mother or mother's health as well. Uh, and be careful of how you speak with your partner, the person you're married to or in a long-term commitment with. <clears throat> now, Mars is going to retrograde. Mars is going to retrograde from the 31st of October onwards. And I believe it's, I think it's about 13th November, isn't it? That he is going to be in Taurus. So if you want to get the lowdown on that, there will be a link above or below. You might have already watched the video, but equally this is the kind of video you might want to watch closer to the time because I launched that one very early. And I will put out a little reminder video pointing everyone to it closer to the 31st of October. But do check out that video as part of this report as well. Now the big news is the eclipse and the eclipse is happening on the 25th of October in Swathi Nakshatra. For you that's happening in your eighth house. Oh this is a big one. So soul contracts are being renegotiated across the board. I've been saying that for all signs but for you this is happening in the eighth house. So basically it's in an area where we can't see what's going on but a lot is being renegotiated for you. Okay, now this could be a time where your guides or angelic team grant you more occult powers, they might grant you more skills, they might grant you more abilities. So there's a lot happening, shifting behind the scenes that you know will hopefully bring more of your divine gifts to the fore. You might have more access, more ability uh, to to do your thing, to share your gifts, you know. And the other thing is that sometimes, because Ketu is involved here as well, new gifts can come online at this time. So it's incredibly exciting. I've got the note here that this this could be really very healing for you as well, depending on where you are with your spiritual development. But Pisces and anyone else who has joined for the whole video, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to have a good October wherever you are. Please let me know how you get on in the comments below. I absolutely love to hear from you. I apologize I'm very behind on comments uh, for these big videos. I, I haven't been doing uh, the comments uh, as much. I, I might just sit down and, and deal with them all at once. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in, 
for liking, for subscribing, for you know keeping this whole thing going for absolutely everyone. So thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.